the set decorator, so I fill, I think I've got the best job, because I get to fill the room up with all this stuff. All the nice furniture and props. Well, I do have some questions for you. So how did you and your team know that filming at the mansion at Fairleigh Dickinson University was a perfect location to film these scenes? Well, I think we got lucky. We've got a really good location department, and we had to film in New Jersey because of the tax incentive, yeah, which yeah. was great mm -hmm. because I do most of my shooting in New York City, and there's so much mm -hmm. production there that at this point, it's pretty much seen it all. If you watch a lot of TV and movies, you probably would recognize locations like, oh, I've seen that before in another one. So um, it's great to have a whole new, um, you know, entire state to shoot in. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure who in the locations department found this, but it's absolutely perfect for us because this room example, it's a beautiful paneled room. It has great architecture, it has great details. And if we were to build this, we wouldn't be able to afford it. So the fact that this exists and it's in such beautiful condition, we, we got very lucky. Good. Um, what is your process like when you prepare to design a production such as this? It's a lot of research because this is based on an actual event in history and it was well documented. We were able to find existing photographs and lots of books that will describe in detail uh, what, you know, what happened. They won't say that the room is filled with antique furniture with red leather bound books. That's where we fill it in. So we see who the character is, and we, you know, for example, John Mitchell, very well documented. Uh, he was a Republican, so we, you know, make sure we don't have inappropriate things in, um, in er all the details help tell the story. So also he was, um, Nouveau Riche had, had very showy, so the antiques in here are a different level than they are in the other officer doing, which is Judge Hoffman, who was much more grounded and down to earth. Mm -hmm. So, like, based on the person's personality. Yes. And, and so, for this, I, I haven't put all the details in yet, but it's going to be very uh, glossy, shiny, lots of brass, mm -hmm. as opposed to the other room, which is more wood tones and uh, a different style. So, this will be very, you know, extremely polished, mm -hmm. and that will be a little more worn because the character is also an older character. and. Uh, you know, different backgrounds, so all the details hopefully tell the story. I noticed that you had a lot of extra pieces outside, a lot of extra lamps and furnitures. Is that just for like option choices so you can put something in and see, oh, we don't like that, and then change it? It out? is, it, it is for options because we only had two days mm -hmm. to do all this, mm -hmm. and even if it was one of these sets, that would be not enough time, but mm -hmm. it's two completely different sets. And even though they're in the same building, in our story, they're in different parts of the country and they don't, they're not related, they don't even meet each other. So it's, it's, um, we're using two different locations. This is a wood paneled room, the other room is, is not. And uh, so it's, it's to have enough options because we have very little time to run out. And I think I explained to you earlier, I can't just go to Kmart and get something. Mm -hmm. I have to go to an antique shop or back to our, our warehouse, which is, and the warehouse was just bought for things for this movie. It's not like, um, when I do a TV show where I'm there for many seasons where I do a, literally a warehouse full of mm -hmm. things with hundreds of lamps. This is where I, I buy things thinking I will use them, hoping I can use them. But I'll, I'll, find a, I'll find places for most things here. There will be some things that I won't use, but I really do try to use as much as possible. That's so interesting. Um, and as you're saying that you didn't have like a lot of time to plan or buy furniture here. How was that in compared to, I know you worked on Crazy Rich Asians, mm -hmm. how was set designing different from that movie to this movie? Do you have more time? It was different in every way and I actually had, I think, less time. Oh, okay. Which was, yeah, that, that movie just happened so fast and in another part of the world and for that it was, it was adapting, it was different money, it was driving another side of the road, it was office supplies are different there, mm -hmm. the size of the paper is different. And you get a, a ground plan with the drawings because we put all the, the furniture plans out. It's a different scale, so this, you know, the tools I use are different. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's not even, um, you know, those are the tools in making, making it happen. But as far as the, the world that we were creating, I had no idea. I'd never, you know, worked on a project like that. So I had to learn all of those very specific elements of the Chinese and Malaysian culture. Mm -hmm. So that was 
that you was did it. a great job. Thank you. That yeah. film was amazing. When I, saw yeah, it. I was, was like, really it looks fun. so good. <laughs> but, you know, entirely different from this movie. Mm -hmm. But I'm still working the same hours, still finding stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, it couldn't be more different than this. Yeah, it's definitely a different tone mm -hmm. and a different worldview. Also, um, do you have any advice for people like me, like film majors, or um, anyone who has is working on a low budget film? Do you have any advice for them? Well, believe it or not, Crazy Rich Asians was a low budget movie oh, really? because it was filmed in Malaysia mostly. Mm -hmm. We were able to get a lot, a lot of bang for the buck, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a lot of money. That typically a movie like that would be around a hundred million dollars. We did it for thirty million. So it's not a low budget like an independent movie, which is mm -hmm. you know under a million dollars. But uh, as far as advice goes, my background is theater. So when I was very very young, I knew I wanted to be in this business, and so I saw a lot mm -hmm. of theater and movies, and went to school for set design, and then came out and did a lot of theater in New York, and then veered more towards movies and television. Mm -hmm. But I got my training as an apprentice doing summer stock theater. And I think that if you can get a job as a production assistant in any capacity, just to see how the production is done, so you can go to the set and see what all the different uh, crew members do, mm -hmm. and work in the office and see from from all angles. Just be aware of of um, how it's put together, and then if you're interested in art, go to museums. Just really fill yourself with as much culture as possible and observe. Because it's really a lot of things in this room and all the sets that I do, even in Crazy Rich Asians, some of it is things that I remember from when I was a child, or a certain color palette of a painting, or uh, the way books were put on my grandmother's bookshelf. Just certain things that I noticed, and I use those today. So it's just be aware and keep your eyes open. Well, that's very like encouraging to hear because I don't have a concentration yet, and mm -hmm. it's nice to know that um, other people didn't know what they were doing at first, and you kind of just go along experience, and that's how you figure out where you want to go. Oh, definitely. A lot of people I work with, they don't go to school for set design. They just fall into it, mm -hmm. but if they have a good eye and um, some you know, enthusiasm and passion, then you, you can go pretty far. Mm -hmm. So just you know, put yourself out there. Can you just talk to the attention to detail? I mean, the changing the doorknobs, the, the lights, the painting over the, the print. Well, that's really important because it's a period movie. And so a lot of times I will go to, you know, I'll watch a movie and be like, oh, that doorknob's wrong. You know? oh. So yeah, things like that. So we don't want to, I don't want to be the guy who gets called out online. Like, he put the wrong door doorknobs on there. Sometimes the actors will say to me, I would like my desktop to be like this. and. You know, we're shooting uh, Michael Keaton today in uh, Ramsey House, and he specifically asked for a certain tea set and a little dish for nuts he wanted to eat during the scene. And then Frank Langella, as the judge in the courtroom, also drew a little sketch up. He wanted a Kleenex box here, pencils here, <coughs> water glass here. So, you know, you want to give it to them, mm -hmm. and because that helps them with their character too. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a team effort. Of oh yeah, everyone coming together.